Hello everybody. In this lecture, we will be solving 1990 IMO problem number four. Uh, it is a functional equation problem, and here is a view of this problem. Let uh, Q plus represent the positive rational numbers, and we would like to construct a function from positive rational numbers uh, to the positive rational numbers such that the following functional equation holds for all x and y. Uh, in positive uh, rationals. Okay, so let's begin by uh, figuring out the value f of 1 uh, that it takes. Um, so I will go ahead and substitute x equals 1 into this functional equation. So when I do that, uh, I get f of 1 times f of y is equal to f of 1 over y or you can rewrite it as f of f of y is equal to, again, f of 1 divided by y. Now, recall that the function f maps positive rationals to positive rationals. As a result, f of 1 is just a positive rational. And therefore, the right-hand side of this uh, final equation is a... A function which is which happens to be a bijection, a bijection. Um, uh, obviously, right, because it takes all the positive uh, rational values for different values of y, right, uh, in y. Okay, so because it's a bijection and because of two very well known results, let me remind you of those two results. Um, and you can easily Google it and find uh, information about these two results. Results. The first result that I'm going to use is that if G O F, the composition of the functions G and F, happens to be uh, uh, an injection, if an injection, uh, then. Um, it turns out f itself uh, is also an injunction, an injunction, a one one on one or one to one function. And the second important result is that if again g o f, the composition of the functions g and f, uh, an onto function, right, an onto function, then um, g is also onto, or surjection, is a surjection, is also onto. Now what it means in our particular case is that because the left hand side, you realize this is just f of f of y, so because the right hand side, well the function is bijection, meaning it's both one on one and onto, it means that, for, first of all, because it's one to one, it tells us that the second one, uh, the second component of the uh, of the composition, has to be one to one. So f is one one or injection, and because it's also um, onto, it means the first one is onto as well. So f is onto, and so that that tells us that f is a bijection. Bijection. I can now uh, plug in for y in this reduced form. For I will replace y with a 1. So what it gives me then is, and so y equals 1 as well. So we get f of f of 1 is equal to f of 1 divided by 1. Or you can just say it's equal to f of 1. So therefore, uh, f of 1 is uh, just a, a fixed point of this function. Now finally, in this... Uh, star uh, functional form, I will also plug in um, y equals f of 1, so that would be very very fun to do, f of f of f of 1 is equal to f of 1 over f of 1, but that's just equal to 1, but recall that f of 1 was a fixed point, um, so this guy, the interior here, is just equal to f of 1, oops, so this is implying that f of f of 1 is equal to 1, but then again, this one is also equal to f of 1, 
So this implies that f of 1 is simply equal to 1. Now we are ready to uh, explore even more. Um, so now let, let's go back to our thing. Let's make a claim here. I claim that our functional equation, our function satisfies f of x, y equals f of x times f of y, meaning f is multiplicative, right, for x, y, and q plus. Let's just prove it. Proof. Now recall that f is onto. As a result, there exists a um, z um, in the domain such that uh, um, y is equal to f of z. So anything in the range, any positive uh, rational will be hit by another rational, right? So because of that, now I can do the following trick conveniently. So f of x, y, notice uh, I will just replace y with this expression here, f of x times f of z, which is simply equal to by definition, uh, by definition, original definition given in the problem, this is simply equal to f of x over uh, z. But then I can split this as f of x times 1 over z. And now notice that uh, we have found uh, earlier that, uh, oops, sorry for that, we have found earlier this result. But notice, remember in this star uh, thing, uh, f of 1, we just later on found out that it was equal to 1. So f of f of y is equal to 1 over y. So therefore, 1 over z is just sim simply equal to uh, f of f of uh, z. But notice that f of z is just equal to y. So therefore, we get that. Uh, so this therefore implies that f of x, y is simply equal to f of x times, and this one here is just f of y. And that proves that uh, for all x, y in uh, positive rationals. So we have just proven our, that our function is multiplicative and it also satisfies this very nice property, um, 1 over x, uh, again for all x, y in uh, positive rationals. The converse also holds true, suggesting that if one starts with these two uh, system of equations, we will immediately get the statement of the problem, and the problem statement, namely that f of x times f of y is equal to f of x over y for all x, y in uh, positive rationals as well. So this is an if and only if type of thing. And now it's time to construct our function f, uh, knowing that it satisfies these two beautiful properties. Um, so I'll just keep the properties above here. So let's first name all the primes. So let p sub 1 be equal to 2. P, so you have the list of primes here, from the lowest to the highest one, an increasing sequence of primes. Um, increasing sequence of primes and we just observe that for uh, for all x in positive uh, rationals um, um, so all these numbers can be written can be uniquely actually uniquely written as x equals um, pi uh, pi to the k to the i or from i equals 1 to n. But here um, notice that k sub i is just an integer, not necessarily positive. So that explains how x can take um, rational values as well. But because our function is multiplicative, we can easily... Uh, establish or claim and establish that the function f is fully determined by its values on, on the primes, right? So what I mean by that is that, for instance, if one would like to calculate f of 6, 
because um, um, because of this feature, the multiplicative feature, f of 6 is just 2 times 3, so this is f of 2 times f of 3, so if one knows the values of the function f for primes, then one can easily find the, the values of f for any number, uh, because th those numbers in the domain will have a prime factorization, and because of the multiplicative feature of f, the function will um, go into all the terms of that product and so therefore knowing the values that primes take is enough to um, determine the, the, um, the shape and the value of the function f. So let's, uh, so let's define a new sequence now. Let, let's define a new sequence of rationals, be rationals um uh, actually positive i should say positive positive rationals and so we uh we define uh, we define or we restrict if you will we define f of pi or we let let's say we let f of pi be equal to q sub i uh for i equals from one to uh, um everywhere um, uh, by the way, f of 1 is equal to 1. We have already found it. So q sub 1 is just 1 in that sense. But yeah. Um, but remember that the list p sub i's are all the primes. Uh, so therefore, knowing that the um, this and having defined this, we can now easily um, say that f of x, which is simply equal to f of pi and the product, of this shape is simply equal to because the function f will go inside the product um, so what it will give me is the product of the function piqi so therefore I interchange the, the product um, operator with the functions and now the function will even go inside the thing um, so that would be equal to f of pi i raised to the k i power and finally f of pi we define as q sub i so that's simply equal to q sub i raised to the power k sub i now uh, all that remains is to uh, find a form a functional um, type a function type that will ensure that uh, the second condition is also satisfied so we know that uh, um, because the f by the um, first condition namely the multiplicative form we can get this result which is beautiful if x is defined as such f of x will be like this but now we need to ensure that the second condition holds as well and for that there's uh, multiple ways to to come up with the final construction of our function uh, f um, so therefore my objective uh, objective is to construct or find find an f such that um, um, f of f of um, I don't need to find to, to write down any uh, that any x like here but I can rather focus myself for just the prime 1 over p, right? So that's exactly what I need to find. So I need to construct an f which will uh, satisfy this uh, this condition. So th as I said, there are multiple ways this can be accomplished. And one way would be the following. So we need to come up with a way to, to define these q sub i's in terms of p sub i's, I guess. So one way to do it is the following. So define... Um, uh, uh, q sub i as follows um, as p, uh, p sub i plus 1 if uh, i is odd and it's equal to 1 over p i minus 1 p sub i minus 1 if i is even and I claim this does the trick and this satisfies uh, this form right the functional form that we're interested in satisfying. So um, let's test it. 
so we will we would have f of f of pi i let's see if this is simply equal to one over pi i right so that's equal to well by definition uh, this is just equal to q sub i the inside is just equal to q sub i so therefore i have f of q sub i and now i have two two routes to take if q sub i is uh, odd then it means we need to evaluate the first one which is like this um, but then this is simply equal to um, again by our definition q sub i plus one q sub i plus one but q sub i plus one is simply equal to because i plus one well i is odd here by the way we, we took that route right so in the case of i is odd we have this which we substituted here so we are in the case i is odd and when i is odd q sub i plus one because i plus one is just uh even uh we'll get this second one so that's simply gonna be equal to one over p i plus one minus one the plus and minus one will cancel and boom we have the desired form for i equal odd um if i odd uh if i is if i even in that case uh we will get f of uh because in the even case we get this one over p i sub p sub i minus one which is simply equal to um one over uh, um because uh, the function is multiplicative let's do it in two steps i guess uh, p sub i minus one right and that's simply um equal to um well f of one is just a one over f of well that thing is just uh equal to um by, by our definition again um q sub i minus one but i minus one because we are in the even case is odd so when it is odd we get this result so therefore we would get one over i i minus one plus one these two cancel out and again we have the correct form and that uh, establishes the uh, result that we need so um so we get uh, what we wanted so we have just shown that so f of f of p for p uh, prime is equal to one over p for p prime um and um and as a result uh, uh, our function f just uh, proposed as such um so so the, the, yeah the, the 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 function f just proposed as such uh, satisfies the two properties uh which i wrote somewhere yeah these two properties in fact let's just call them one and two i guess one and two so whenever f is defined like this we can guarantee that and uh, for q well and then qi in this fashion we can guarantee that the function will satisfy both the multiplicative form and this and um that does the trick so hope you enjoyed the video and looking forward to see you guys in our next lecture